Hey everyone, we're going to now look at problem number one from the old exam problems, which is a good example of a 3D particle equilibrium type problem. As you can see, we've got a truss here, we've got the x, y, and z axes. We've got a couple different members of the truss, we've got an 8 kilonewton force applied downward in the z direction. The problem asks us, with all the given coordinates and uh, dimensions and points here, to draw a free body diagram of point D and to determine the forces in the members AD, CD, and BD. Well, you can see that those are the three members that are touching point D. So to get things started off, let's draw a free body diagram. To do that, we will first draw point D with our 8 kilonewton force acting down. Now in 3D, we don't have to worry too much about the free body diagram. We just want you to show the vectors. So if this is point D, all the forces that we have, because we're pushing downward, are going to be pushing back up along those rods. So from point A to point D, we will have a compression member pushing this way, and we'll call this AD. We've also got DB going from B to D, and we will call this BD. And then last but not least, we've got CD kind of acting at the back from point C to point D, and we'll call this vector CD. The last thing we really need to do is just draw the X, Y, and Z axes. So our Z axes is that one, our Y axes is that one, and our X axes is that one. Now as you can see with this free body diagram, we don't ask you to draw any of the dimensions or point coordinates or anything like that. Again, the thing that we predominantly care about is the direction of your vectors in question. Now that we've drawn our free body diagram, we will do the first step in a typical 3D problem, which will be to define all of our important vectors and magnitudes. So let's get that started. So to do this, we've got three vectors that we really care about. Vector AD, CD, and BD. So what we need to do is use the coordinates to define the position from A to D, C to D, and B to D, and to calculate the magnitudes so we can later do the unit vectors and then use that to solve the problem. So let's just go in order. Vector AD is going to be equal to the coordinates of point D minus the coordinates of point A. What we're doing now is because we're going from A to point D, we always use the end point minus the initial point. So the coordinates of point D are 3, 2, and 6, and the coordinates of A are 6, 0, 0. So we will do 3 minus 6 gets us a value of negative 3i. We do 2 minus 0 gets us a value of 2j. And then we do 6 minus 0, which gets us a value of 6k. To calculate the magnitude, it's just like you would in two dimensions, but with a three-dimensional vector, we're going to calculate the magnitude or the length of A by doing 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared. So it's all the numbers I just have up here squared, put in this equation right here, and that will pop us a value out of 7. We can now repeat this process for the other two vectors which I'll do right now. What you can see is that I've repeated the steps from the first part for AD, for BD and CD as well. So for BD, we are doing the value of D minus B, which would get us three minus three is zero I, two minus 4.5 is negative 2.5 J, and six minus zero is six K. BD then is the square root of 2.5 squared plus six squared, gives us a value of 6.5, and CD is D minus C, which is going to be 3 minus 0, 2 minus 0, and 6 minus 0, which gets us 3i plus 2j plus 6k, which with the square root of all that stuff, not a surprise, is the same as AD, gives us a value of 7. Now that we've got all this good stuff right here, our second step is going to be to define the unit vectors, and I'll show you what that means. So recall that when you're doing unit vectors, the whole point of doing this is to kind of use this for the sum of the forces equations. So remember that FAD as a force vector is going to be equal to the magnitude of FAD, like maybe 500 newtons or 1,000 newtons, whatever the value of compression that we solve for, FAD. 
So it's the magnitude of FAD times the unit vector of AD. The unit vector is going to be equal to the position vector AD over the magnitude of that position vector AD. So our unit vector of AD is going to be negative 3 over 7i plus 2 over 7j plus 6 over 7k. That's just 3 over 7, 2 over 7, and 6 over 7. We could repeat the process for the other two, but it's kind of redundant, and that will all be evident in our next equations. So you don't really need to write this out, but I was just showing you where we're getting this information for the next step. Now that we have an understanding of the unit vectors, we can do step three, which will be sum the forces. So to sum the forces, we'll essentially take the x component of each one of our vectors and sum that into the x equation here. We'll repeat that for the y and the z. And using the information here and here, you'll kind of see how that plays out. So to do the sum of the forces in the x, I'm going to set that equal to 0. That's going to be equal to negative 3 over 7 FAD, because that's the x component of FAD. Then if you look, I'm going to take the x component of BD, which is going to be 0 over 6.5. Well, that's going to be a value of 0, so I don't actually have anything right here. Now we'll look at the x component of CD, which is going to be a positive 3 over 7 force CD. So our sum of the forces in the x equation then becomes negative 3 over 7 FAD, which this is essentially the unit vector times the magnitude of FAD. We then add the unit vector of CD times the magnitude of CD. And this is our sum of the forces in the x equation. We'll now repeat that process for the sum of the forces in the y and the z, and I'll do that right now. Now what you can see is I've taken the sum of the forces in the y and the sum of the forces z equations and written those down. And again, what you can see is for the sum of the forces in the y, I did 2 over 7 FAD minus 2.5 over 6.5 FBD plus 2 over 7 CD. Oops, sorry, plus 2 over 7 CD. For the Z, I did 6 over 7 FAD, 6 over 6.5 FBD, and 6 over 7 CD. The important thing that a lot of people often forget is the force that's applied. Don't forget about your free body diagram because you've got the Z component of 8 kilonewtons right here. That goes in as a negative 8 because it's pointed downward. Now that we've got the sum of the forces, we can solve this either using substitution method or using matrix math, which is how I will be solving the problem. Let me show you how to set that up. So the first way that we could solve this is via substitution. Up here you've got a system of equations. You've got three equations and three unknowns, AD, BD, and CD. To solve it with substitution, it would kind of take a little bit of work. You'd have to solve for maybe AD in terms of CD. You could then plug that into this equation here. So you would have FCD, BD, and CD. You could then solve for everything again in ter for FBD in terms of CD. And then use your equation from the first part, plug that in there. Use your equation from the second part to substitute out BD. And you would have the final equation all in terms of CD. Then you could solve and work backwards to solve for AD and BD. Now, because that's a decent amount of work, matrix math is actually a very good strategy to use if you have a calculator like this one, a TI-83, TA84, or a graphing calculator. So to do matrix math, essentially what you're doing is you're going to be developing an A matrix. You'll multiply that by a variable matrix, and you'll set that equal to what your solutions are. Ultimately, in your calculator, you'll take the inverse of matrix A and multiply that by matrix B to solve for the variables that you're trying to calculate, which in our case are going to be the values of compression in AD, BD, and CD the forces in those members. So to do this, all we really have to do is set up a 3 by 3 matrix for A, and we'll plug in our values for FAD, FBD, and FCD in column format. So you can see this kind of right here is already generally our matrix. So for AD, right here, this column, I'm going to plug in negative 3 over 7 in our first spot, I'll plug in 2 over 7 in our second row, and then 6 over 7 in our third row. 
For BD, I'll plug in its x value, which as you can see from our sum of the forces in the x, is 0. And then I will plug in negative 2.5 over 6.5 and 6 over 6.5. For FCD, I will plug in 3 over 7 in row 1, 2 over 7 in row 2, and 6 over 7 in row 3. So what you can see right here is that these are some of the forces in the x equation right here. We have negative 3 over 7 FAD plus 0 FBD plus 3 sevenths FCD. You can see we've got our sum of the forces in the y equation is row 2 and our sum of the forces of the z equation is row 3. Hopefully that's pretty clear. Now what we're doing is we're multiplying this by our x matrix, which is really the values of compression or the forces in our members FAD FBD and FCD. We set this equal to our B matrix, which is going to be the value of everything that we know on the other side of our equation. Now in the X equation, we have AD and CD and a zero. So the first part of our B matrix is zero. The same is true for the Y equation. We don't know anything other than our variables, so we have a zero. But for our z equation, we do actually have another force, the 8 kilonewtons pointing down. So as you can see, it's a negative 8 on this side of the equation, but when I bring it to the other side, it becomes positive. So essentially what I've got now in this matrix is I've got the sum of the forces in the z is all of this stuff equal to 8 kilonewtons. I then do this, and I can just simply write this little statement here. I plugged into my calculator and I can then report the answers. So just to show you what I do on my calculator, I plugged in A, I used the inverse button right here, and then I multiplied by B. So let me show you how to do this on the calculator. We'll go to second matrix, and we've got an A matrix and a B matrix that I've already made. You would scroll to the right to click to edit. You would click enter, and that would bring you into the 3x3 three three matrix for A. You would then go through and enter all of these values into the matrix, which is what I've already done. And you can see this in the top row over here that I've got negative 0 0.42860 and 42857 as well. So that is our first row of that matrix right there. So I can go back to matrix, and I can edit matrix B. I will make that a 3x1 matrix, what you can see I've got plugged in right there is 0, 0, and 8. I can now quit out of all of this to get back to the calculating space. I'll then click second matrix, and under the names I will click enter when I reach A. So I click enter, and I've now got matrix A. I will then push the inverse button right here. So now I've got A to the negative 1. I'll then go back into the matrix and go to the point B, click enter, and now what you can see I have in the calculator is or a to the negative 1 times b matrix. When I click the enter button, I will get an answer out, which tells me that the value of FAD, FBD, and FCD, which I have over here in my variable matrix, are the following. So the value I have for FAD is 2.59 kilonewton, kilonewtons, the value for FBD is 3.85 kilonewtons, and the value of FCD is 2.59 kilonewtons. So that's it. All of my answers are positive, which is a good thing. Usually, if you ever make a mistake and you're getting negative things over here, all that means is that you drew your arrow backwards. Usually in these problems, when you've got a rod, that rod will usually be in compression, so you know the direction of the arrows. And if you've got a tension or a rope, you know the direction of those arrows as well. So usually, your answers in this point should all be positive. A mistake that a lot of people make is that they sometimes take this value here and they plug in negative 8 in there. So if you were to have done that, let's see what would have happened. So I can go to second enter, do the exact same thing again. And if I had had negative 8 in there, you would see that all my answers are now negative. So the values are still all the same. It's just because I would have had this negative 8 there, that would have implied on my free body diagram that 8 was going up and that all my arrows would be pointing the other way. So, don't do that. 
but otherwise you're fine. You're still gonna more or less get the correct answers. And once you've gotten to this point here, that is your final and last step. You then simply just write out the answers for the values of FAD, which is 2.59 kilonewtons. FBD is equal to 3.85 kilonewtons. And FCD is equal to 2.59 kilonewtons. We then box our answer and we are now done the problem. Woohoo! There you go. That's how you solve a typical problem number one on the final exam, which is going to be 3D particle equilibrium. You'll have usually three unknown forces, an applied force that's either known or unknown, and you then go through and solve using the following methodology. Good luck on the final exam. Hope this was helpful.